Hello and welcome, my poor leaves. Today, Ada has a new video for us and we're gonna react to it. As always, check out the link to the original video in the description and leave a like and a subscribe. So, let's get in and see what he has to tell us. This is Rich Boy Winston. He resides just outside of Petalburg Woods in Pokemon Ruby Sapphire. And he looks really rich. I mean, he's blonde. Fire and Emerald, and especially in- That's all. This is a video about mathematics, and it's like 8 a.m. in the morning. Why am I doing this to myself? In challenge runs, he's a really good early game trainer to beat, because he only has one Pokemon, but he gives 1,400 Poke Dollars, which is a lot this early on. Let's check up on him in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and see how much he- What? 960 oh. Poke Dollars? Wait, he has less money? But the items just north in the Respiro Mart cost the same in both generations. Lowering wages, while the cost of goods and services remains the same? I mean, okay, logically this just means one thing, and that is that I forgot to turn on my backlight. There, that's better. It's probably just a balancing thing. But that wouldn't be the fun answer, right? Hang on, is the Hoenn region in a recession? Oh god, okay, uh, don't panic, don't panic. We can get to the bottom of this. The, the news is probably covering this, right? Hello and welcome to tonight's edition of ADEF News, your go-to... Poor closures due to snow. Rustboro trainers. Okay, <laughs> that's a nice idea. Spot for everything ADEF. I'm ADEF, and I'm ADEF. Shiny hunting stock continued to wrongly plummet today as users on YouTube site wide continue to comment incorrectly about RNG manipulation. Your info treat if you investigate RNG manipulation in Pokemon. Yes, you are kind of right with your statement that it's memoryless, but also not. even though they have no idea what that really means. When asked for further comment, random YouTube user BrimpusGrimpus40 simply said, I don't... what? How'd you get this number? In other news, today, puppies worldwide are... <laughs> Hold that thought, ADEF. Breaking news. <gasps> this just in, a local... What is it about puppies? Wait, you don't have puppies in the Pokemon world! No! Market discrepancy has been discovered just south of Rustboro City in the Hoenn region. We go now to our local Hoenn affiliated economics correspondent, ADEF. ADEF? Thank you so much, ADEF. I've just spoken with a rich boy, Winston, who was shocked to find out that his money has not grown toe to toe with inflation over the last decade between the release of Pokemon Emerald and the Gen 3 remakes. When asked for further comment, he responded with one of his two lines of pre written dialogue. But what exactly is going on here? Oh my god, a microphone. Wait, hang on. Does that mean we're about to have a fully edited video essay style segment with a white guy standing in front of a green screen with a microphone that's likely longer than five minutes but shorter than 20 on a super niche topic you've really never thought of before, like explaining the math of economics and inflation through the lens of Pokemon? Sounds like fun, I guess. Yep, yeah, that's exactly what's about to happen. Strap in. People talk a lot about inflation, but what does it actually mean? Well, in very basic terms, inflation is essentially just the rise in cost of goods and services over time. Usually, inflation rises by about the same amount on average every year. The American Bureau of Labor Statistics has a really nice graph that shows that inflation is usually, usually around 2% annually. Okay, so if a product, say a Pokeball, costs 200 Poke Dollars in 2004 in Pokemon Emerald, how much should it cost in 2014 in Omega Ruby, assuming inflation sits at 2% per year? The kind of calculation we're about to do is the same kind that people do in historical documentaries and stuff when they say, well, it's actually $45 million in today's money, or they say, accounting for inflation. Let's try to think intuitively about how a function might look that could model this kind of growth. First of all, we have our initial amount, our principal. We'll call that P. If we just look at increasing with inflation once, well, then we would need to multiply P by the rate of inflation, which we'll call R, and then add that back on to P. Simple enough, we can represent that with P plus open parentheses P times R. 
that can be simplified to p times one plus r by just pulling p out. We'll say that equals a, our final amount, after one year of inflation. Amazing, we have a simple equation for a once enacting inflation. But we're talking about compounding inflation. Each year, inflation does not just affect P, the initial cost, but it also affects however much that thing costs now after however much inflation has already happened. That means A becomes the new P for the next year, basically. To model yeah. how inflation may affect- Yeah, th that makes sense, actually. That makes sense to me. He, he is explaining it very well, what can I say? It's, you, you have, the 2% aren't always from the original 200 polka dots. It's each year, from like the next year you take two percent from two hundred two polka dollars and that would be only one percent or two percent you know what i mean i hope an amount over a longer period of time we can raise our one plus r term to the power of however many years we want and we'll call that t for time and voila we've derived the function for compound interest this function is typically used to talk about interest growing on a loan or on a savings account, where the interest that you've gained is also affected by the next bout of interest, hence why it's called compound interest, but it works for our purposes for inflation too. To be very technical though, this equation we just derived only works for the increase of inflation at discrete. Important note for math nerds, which we are of course, saying this function only works at discrete times isn't entirely accurate. Later in this video, I provide a further note for you all to clear this up during a different derivation. This explanation I'm giving right now serves the purpose of this video well, but it's not entirely mathematically accurate. I'll clear this up later. Okay. Times. But this isn't really how inflation works. I mean, the Fed doesn't sit down every year on January 1st and go, All right, gang, well, <laughs> we've discussed it and we've decided to increase the price of eggs by 10% so that single moms can't feed their kids breakfast anymore. <laughs> Good luck out there. Inflation is a constant thing that is always changing. That 2% annual inflation rate that we talked about earlier is really just an average over how inflation was over the course of the entire year. And now for a word from our sponsor, I'll throw back to you at the main desk, Adef. Take it away. And then please also throw it back to me when you're done because I, I'm not done with my whole thing. I've still got more stuff to say. So please throw it back. Thank you. Wait, I have to do an ad read, but you're gonna continue doing the news on my broadcast? You're just in a, you know what? Never mind. doesn't matter. If you want to be more cognizant about your money and not run into the same issues as rich boy Winston over there, <laughs> well, today's sponsor, Rock... Ah! I was just about to guess what it is. I wouldn't have guessed Rocket Money because I don't know Rocket Money, honestly. Yeah, check out, like, if you're interested in this, check out his sponsorship, of course. Rocket Money is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. I, a news anchor, am using Rocket Money to cancel all of my unwanted and forgotten subscriptions to streaming services because I don't need to watch TV. I am the TV. I'm also using Rocket Money to help me budget better. No more nights out on the town spending $7,000 bar tabs on 40-year-old glasses of scotch to impress my producers. Rocket Money monitors my spending by category and sends a notification when I've exceeded my limit. Oh. Here's a notification now. Oh no, looks like I spent too much money this month on 3D printed life-size replicas of Walter Cronkite. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Just 10 more. Rocket Money has helped save people up to $740 when they use all of its features with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash ADEF or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash ADEF to get started for free. Back to you, ADEF. You can further generalize our earlier function to account for increasing the price twice a year or every month or every day. But for a continuous version of this function that is in constant flow, and in my opinion, the most useful form, we need one of the most beautiful numbers in mathematics. Euler's number, E. You're probably familiar with it. It goes 2.718, blah, 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 blah. It goes on forever. It's a transcendental number, just like pi. Yeah, I was about to say. Pi. E has a lot of interesting properties, but chief among them is its ability to chart exponential growth. This ability is due to how E is defined. That is, how it's derived. 
exponential functions grow, well, exponentially. When looking at a function like this, we might want to look at the derivative. Looking at the derivative is useful because we can look more closely at change over time, since the derivative of an exponential function will reveal the growth rate. What's special about e is that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, which makes this function super easy to analyze. I'd love to show you exactly why that is, but this is a... Quite honestly, I'm a bit out of the side. I like math, but the... the... I am going to be honest, I don't understand what's happening here right now. I mean, I, I understand the... systemology, if that makes sense. I'm understanding what he's going to do. Just not what these letters mean. I mean, yeah, they mean numbers, but... It's complicated. A news broadcast, and that derivation would take at least 10 extra minutes and kill retention, and is largely outside the scope of our discussion of inflation, so you can find a full derivation and discussion of E over on my Patreon. But basically, this self-derivative property makes E fantastic to work with for growth functions. So how can we use it to model inflation? Well, for our function E to the X, let's replace X with T for time, like before. Now instead of our 1 plus R to the T term, we simply have E to the RT. When combined with our initial amount P, we get A equals PE to the RT. This is a third. <laughs> I don't know why this is making me laugh, but this is a third. This is the function for continuous compound interest and is the function that your bank uses to model growth in a savings account, for example. But generally speaking, we can also use this to model how inflation would affect the price of our Pokeball. At a 2% increase per year, a 10-year model would change our 200 Poke Dollar Pokeball into a 244. Again, important math note for nerds, the P1 plus RT equation from earlier will get almost this exact same result. When I said earlier that P1 plus RT wasn't continuous, that wasn't entirely true. It is continuous and differentiable. The reason the results are so similar is because E and the earlier function are nearly identical in the way in which they are derived. E is, at its core, defined by this similarity to an ability to change between different exponential functions. As the limit goes to infinity, both functions will continue to be relatively similar but I personally favor the function with E, as it is more accurate over time for our purposes. More accuracy is always better, of course. Thus, it maybe wasn't accurate to say the earlier function wasn't continuous, but certainly isn't the perfect model for our purposes. ...for PokéDollar purchase. But that didn't happen. The cost of items in Gen 3 and the Gen 3 remakes are essentially the same across the board. But some trainers have less money. What gives? Well, the cost of goods and services has remained the same, but Rich Boy Winston's funds have gone down. Either he's made some bad investments, or his money has depreciated over time. When you lose a battle in Pokemon, you lose half of your money. For these trainers in the games that you fight, surely that means- That is not true in the current generations, though. That is- that's how it was. Up until Gen something, I don't know which Gen, like- when did I last lose a Pokemon? Well, <laughs> I did lose in a shiny hunt. That was weird. It was quite recently. I only had one Pokemon with me. The rest was eggs and it just went bad. Means that when you win and they lose, they give you half their money too, right? Winston gives you 1400 Poke Dollars in Gen 3, implying that he has 2800 on him. It's common to equate one Poke Dollar to one yen. I mean, look, the symbols are pretty much exactly the same. Meaning Winston's 2,800 yen that he has on him equates to about $20 USD with today's exchange rate. But let's assume that he doesn't have all the money he owns in his wallet, even though as the protagonist, uh, we do. But anyway, let's be generous and say that what he has in his wallet is 1% of his net worth. That means that rich boy Winston has only $2,000 to his name, but he's supposed to be rich. His trainer class aside, I think he may just be pretending because there are far, far wealthier people in Hoenn in both games. Even if we assume that the world of Pokemon highly values the buying power of just one dollar, that doesn't change the fact that his funds have depreciated. And we can see by exactly how much. 
If we take 960, our new value for his payout in the remakes when you beat him, and set it equal to 1400 from Gen 3's payout, times e to the r times 10 years, we can solve for r by isolating it and figure out the rate of depreciation over time. To do this, we use a natural log, which is sort of like the opposite function to e. Mathematicians are gonna hate that I said that, but let's just go with it for now. That isolates us down and we can divide and do some algebra to get r alone equal to negative 3.8% per year. That does mean that his money is outpacing inflation, which is great, just in the wrong direction. If you put your money into a pretty stable high yield savings account or maybe like a stable brokerage account, your goal would be for your money to either pace with or slightly outpace inflation so that your money grows over time. That's not even to mention that in an ideal world, your wages or your salary should also be increasing with inflation over time. American minimum wage is not a good example of this. That means we should expect Winston's payout to have gone up in the remix, up to 1700 poke dollars, but it's not. If on average people, especially lower income people, are losing money, i.e. their wages are going down or not increasing enough to pace with inflation, or simply the spending power of their dollar is decreasing or unemployment rises, all while the price of goods and services like rent or utilities. Wait, wait, the minimum wage in America is $7? I thought Germany's minimum wage was bad. Oh, that's off. I mean, it explains a lot, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, let's not get into politics. Either stay the same or increase, a recession could be on the horizon. I want to be clear, I'm not an economist. I'm the silly Pokemon math guy from YouTube. I've probably already said some inaccuracies about inflation or the way the economy works in certain countries already. Recessions are difficult, fickle things to predict. Even the most brilliant minds in modern economics frequently get it wrong. But suffice it to say, if low income earners' wages aren't pacing with inflation, or maybe they're going down, all while the market expects them to pay the same or more for goods and services they require to survive, it's probably not looking good. Now, I keep specifying low income. Why? Well, recessions adversely and disproportionately affect low income earners. Wealthy people are not nearly as affected as their safety. Yeah, the problem is that most people are low earners. That's just what the common guy is, not earning much. Like, the rich guys are the top 20% or something. And when I say rich, I don't mean like millionaires, but if you have like a yearly income of 100K, you're not like filthy rich or anything, like you're not gonna become a millionaire, but you live a pretty good life and are also probably not that affected by this. But most people don't get close to 100K net is much larger, they have better access to financial resources, the legal system doesn't treat them the same, and they aren't only a few paychecks from poverty or homelessness. They don't have to worry about the immediate effects of the what recession paychecks from poverty. Oh, it's not a, not a visual metaphor. Okay. Poverty or homelessness. They don't have to worry about the immediate effects of the recession nearly as much. For those reasons, increasing wealth inequality <clears throat> is one of the most common indicators of an incoming recession. Let's use that indicator to verify whether or not the Hoenn region is about to or is already in the midst of experiencing a recession. To verify this, let's look at some more trainers and see how their money changed from Gen 3 into the remakes. Looking at the earlier routes in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire reveals something startling. Most of the early trainers in the remakes have less money than they did in the originals, while the late game trainers, especially gym leaders and Elite 4 members, have more. In some cases, much more. Elite 4 Make the poor poorer and the rich richer, I guess. Remember Sydney, the first Elite 4 member in Hoenn? gives nearly double as much money in Gen 6 as he does in Gen 3. They were right when they said elite. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I right? What I'm saying is, Hoenn might not be in a recession yet, but the wealthy trainers seem to be getting richer and the poor trainers seem to be getting poorer. To any SEC or FTC officials watching, I recommend starting your Hoenn investigation with the Devon Corporation. After all, they seem to have a chokehold on the Pokeball market. The CEO's son just so happens to be the champion of the entire region. Oh, and uh, they seem to be spending quite a lot of their current runway on a project that can revive fossils from the dead. 
just kind of has evil corporation written all over it. Anyway, back to you, Adef. What the hell? That turned out to be like a whole thing, and it was so depressing. We don't have any time anymore for our broadcast. Whatever. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching the ADEF news. I've been. Yeah, okay, those are the patrons and stuff. So, yeah, check out the original video, of course. Um, support this guy, he's doing great. And, yeah, with that said, poor Horn. But, quite honestly, I never liked Horn that much anyway. It's my second least favorite region, right after Carlos. Carlos is the worst. The X and Y games are just a bundle of missed opportunities, and that's bad. But oh well, like I said, subscribe, leave a like, all the good things, and we'll see each other next time. Until then, bye bye, and so check out this video. Oh, isn't it sexy? Being there like... clickable. <laughs>